Okay, I'm just going to read a few verses found in the book of John. That's in the New Testament of the Bible. If you'd like your own copy of the Bible, we're giving them away for free. Feel free to come and take one and read it for yourself. I think you will thoroughly enjoy it. It's the only book that, by reading its context, and it shows you how to be saved, how to be forgiven from your sins. So I'm going to be reading the book of John and chapter 3, and I'll start it at verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now I'll go down to verse 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You know, friends, this story it's telling about, even as Moses lifted up the serpent into the wilderness, even so much the Son of Man be lifted up. That's a reference back to the Old Testament. And it tells a story about the children of Israel. And they were, they had disobeyed God, they're grumbling against God's authority. And for judgment for that, God, their snakes came into their camp, poisonous snakes, and they bit them. And they're venom. Those people are sick and they're going to die. And the Lord told Moses to lift up a brass serpent on a pole. And that whoever would look at that pole on the serpent would live. And friend, you know, we are kind of like those Israelites today. We have, as it were, a poison in our body that will one day lead us to death. That will one day lead us to death. That is called sin. For as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death has passed upon all men, in that all have sinned. And friend, this little three letter word called sin is far more serious than any sickness, any disease, or any venom. This sin affects 100% of mankind. Doesn't matter how good they are or how bad they are. They're all, as it were, equal in that all have sinned. We have all fallen short of God's standard. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we can read how sin is leading us to an awful place on this chart called hell because God is a holy and a righteous God who cannot look upon sin and cannot let sin in heaven. Listen to the words of the very Lord himself. If you die in your sins where I am, you cannot come. But maybe you say today, friend, oh, that's good for the drug addicts or that's good for the murderers, but you know me, I am a pretty good person. Maybe you say, I give money to charity. I never hurt anybody. You know, friend, your good works you do can never get you to heaven. You know, one of the most dangerous things for souls today, friend, is self-righteousness. The thing, the thought that men have that I'm okay, I'm all right. I may, I may not be perfect, but I, I do good things. I, I try to be a good citizen and friend. Who, the person who has that attitude is in more danger than a criminal. Because if you go to a criminal and you say to him, you're guilty, he'll probably say, you're right, I need salvation, I've done crime. But if you go to a self-righteous person, a person who thinks they're okay because of their own good works, they'll say, what do you mean I need to be saved? Maybe that drug addict needs to be saved. 
Maybe that homeless man laying in the corner, maybe he needs to be saved, but I don't need to be saved. I'm an upright citizen. I follow the laws. I give money to charity. I've never been to jail, arrested, but friend, can you see what I mean? You are far likely to continue in your sins, far more likely, and far less likely to humble yourself if you have this self-righteous attitude. And friends, something you have to face today is that you cannot get to heaven through your own good works. That your own righteousnesses will not justify you of God. In fact, God hates it when we try to work our way to heaven. The Lord said that all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags because it has, as if we were doing our righteousnesses and saying, no, I'll get to heaven my way. You know, when I give out tracts to people, sometimes they say, that's how I'm good. I have my own way. You know, in the book of Proverbs, it says there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death and friend. You may genuinely think that your religion will bring you to heaven, that your way will make you right with God. You know, once when I was up north in the bush, I wanted to go see a spring my friend had told me about. He said, just follow this path, turn here, and you find the spring. So I went up, and I followed that, and I ended up taking a wrong turn. And I ended up in the swamp. And I thought genuinely that if I follow, I'll go to the end of the swamp, I'll find the spring. I thought genuinely in my heart that my way will end up bringing me to this spring. But friend, all it did was getting me more confused and I had to end up stopping and backtracking and going down the path and admitting that I was wrong. And friend, that is the same with you. You may genuinely think that your religion, I don't care what religion it is, that your good works, that you're being upright, will get you to heaven. But friends, something you have to face if you want to be made right with God today is that your good works, your religion, will not get you to heaven. In fact, if you continue in your religion and in not accepting God's way, then you will find your place, yourself in a place called hell because for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and if we could think about the second part of the verse even as Moses lifted up his servant in the wilderness so must the son of man be lifted up you know 2,000 years ago the Lord Jesus Christ God's son came down from heaven and was in flesh, he was 100% man and 100% God. He was absolutely sinless. Not only did he not sin, but he could not sin. And friend, as he went through his life, and he came to his part where they men not always seek to try to find a way, some way to get rid of him because they didn't like to face that they were sinners. They didn't like what he told them. That's why people, when we're preaching on the corner, they mock us and they yell and maybe they even assault us. It's happened before. That's because they don't like to face that they're sinners. And they brought him. They brought a crown and they captured him and they brought him and put him in front of a false court. They brought false witnesses against him. And even though those witnesses, all their Man, all their stories were different. They still, they brought him before a Roman judge called Pilate. And this man named Pilate, he knew the Lord was innocent. But he under his under pressure, he wasn't more collapsed. And he said to the people, what will you do, have me do of Jesus? And they cried, crucify him. We will not have this man to reign over us. And friend, if you're hard today, if you reject the gospel, you're just like these these people who said crucify him we will not have this man to reign over us and they brought him up that Roman hill and they stuck and they nailed his hands and his feet and he hung there on the cross between his own heaven and his own earth and he suffered and he bled 
and he died not for his own sins. Because if he had his own sins, he could not suffer for other men's sins. I couldn't suffer for your sin today, friend. He suffered for our sins. The prophet Isaiah prophesied 700 years before, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement that brings us peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And friend, that's why all you have to do today is try, humble yourself before God. All your repentance, it's really agreeing with God for you as a sinner, humbling yourself, admitting before God that you are a sinner and that you cannot get to heaven in your condition and trust His Son that on His death on the cross was sufficient for you. And friend, if you do that, then you will be saved. But if you do not, this Bible says you are condemned already. So friend, I urge you today to trust Him. There's a hymn. It says, life at best is very brief, like the binding of a sheaf. Be in time. And friend, I plead you today, do not put it off another day. You have no idea when death could strike. It could strike today, friend. Men, the Bible says, boast thyself not of tomorrow. This, on this chart, it shows this pillar of death. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. And friend, you will face God. And if you do not trust Him as your Savior, then you will face Him in your sins. And He will not let you into heaven. The door will be shut to you. Not because He doesn't want you to be a friend, I want to make that very clear. God loves us so much that He said He is willing that all men would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So friend, please trust Him today. Please do not put it off another day. The Bible says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? So friends, trust Him today. And if you do, you will know that if you die in your sleep tonight, you will be in heaven. Thank you very much for listening.